Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So just a quick update from the last video um, about a week ago. So I do try to make a video at least once a week. Um, I do have a full-time job, so it is hard. So please bear with me on that. But I'll try to keep you know pumping these out and you know giving as much information as I can. Um, I did meet uh, with the CEO of a new genomics uh, crypto startup called Luna DNA. Um, and I made a video on that. Uh, that was February 16th, I think. So if you go back and look um, on prior videos, uh, I th I'm trying to remember the title of the video. I think it was like a crypt crypto hopper update and my side gig is like an ICO analyst. I think that's the title of the, of the video. Um, but I think it was um, back on February 16th. But I met with uh, the CEO that I actually used to work with. Um, and they started up a, a crypto uh, company and um, their genomics uh, crypto startup. They're called Luna DNA. So I met with him, um, got a lot of information out. So check, make sure you check that out. It's a lot of cool stuff. Um, and then I also, uh, about a month or two ago, I started working uh, part time for a asset management company as an ico analyst um, again just part-time because my full-time position um, i work in the uh, tech industry and uh, biotech um, more of you know on the like a software manager um, on the uh, you know on the it side <clears throat> um, so you know using that experience um, my computer science education i have you know business and finance education as well so using all that um, that's uh, kind of how i guess i was hired um, to work with them, you know, more of a, you know, part-time basis to do these ICO reviews. Um, and I actually just had dinner with them last night. And it's a, it's a smaller company. Um, I think it's about 15 or 20 guys. And um, they're based here in San Diego, California. And like I said, it's an asset management company. Um, when I get more familiar, um, you know, obviously I don't want to share too much details um, and make sure, you know, obviously they're comfortable with it too. Um, but I'll maybe share those details later, you know, as we go. But um, they're getting heavily involved in cryptocurrencies um, as well as ICOs. Um, so a lot of, you know, big uh, investors come to them and um, that want to invest in crypto, whether it be ICOs or, you know, specific uh um, you know, crypto investments. So like I said, I had dinner with them last night. I'm learning a lot. I'm meeting a lot of new folks, you know, in the crypto world. Um, so it's a lot of good stuff. So like I said in the last video, I wanted to do another 10 um, ICO reviews and we can get into another uh, Crypto Hopper update. Um, I have a huge change um, with Crypto Hopper. I changed, um, I upgraded my subscription to their best subscription. I changed exchanges. Um, I made a lot of huge changes um, with Crypto Hopper. Um, I changed all my settings, so I completely revamped everything with my Crypto Hopper. So um, I'll give an update towards the end of the video um, with that too. So, um, so I'll kind of quickly go through these ICO reviews. Um, like, like a lot of these are no's. So I'll briefly go through those um, and we'll do another 10 uh, reviews in this video too. And again, this is the spreadsheet that I uh, provide the asset management company that I work for. So these are, you know, obviously professional reviews um, and they use these notes to determine whether or not to invest in these ICOs for, for, for their investors, um, you know, and their, their firm is, you know, multi-million dollar uh, firm. So that, you know, they're investing, you know, millions and millions of dollars um, in some of these ICOs. So these are, you know, again, they're professional reviews. All right, so we left off on autonomy last time, or that was number 10. So let's pick up on the core network. So this was, <clears throat> I marked this as a, as a yes. So um, to possibly look into, um, for further further review, so basically, what these guys are, um, they're basically um, building infrastructure for community-owned financial systems. So they're providing tools, you know, needed to build a self-sustaining community-owned ecosystem for circulating supply and accumulating uh, capital within a community. Um, you know, validating identity to use, you know, identity to store, transfer, and lend money to make payments, um, value added service for lending, market, marketplaces, uh, distribution, um, digital ed education, uh, basically, you know, even without internet access um, through SMS, um, you know, uh, 
um, basically, you know, you have text messaging. Um, so it's kind of cool stuff. So basically what my uh, quick analysis or what my personal review was for them was, um, you know, they have a strong uh, internet presence. Um, they're, you know, semi, semi strong team, uh, well, that well laid out roadmap. Um, you know, they have a lot of partners as well as, you know, they've been um, a lot in the news with, you know, good visibility. Uh, I think the idea is good. Um, and they're paving the, you know, the way for it. The white paper is a bit lacking when I, when I reviewed it. And again, I, I review all these white papers too. Um, you know, I, I, you know, scour the internet. Um, I read the forums. I, I, you know, read their websites. I look at their teams. I read their white papers. Um, you know, I, I look in the, you know, the, the reddits and all the underground forums. So I, I you know, I heavily, heavily research these things. Um, so the white paper is a bit lacking. Uh, it's more catered towards their financial vision, um, less details of basically how they'll get there. Um, but I think they are on the right track, you know, building solid found foundation um, to where this could really involve into something good. So like I said, you know, I did find th their internet presence is very good. They have a very solid team. Um, their model is, is very solid. So I did mark this, you know, as like a seven out of 10. So this is, again, again, these are all evolving. Um, not to say that, you know, they have something, you know, completely solid out there right now, but it was worth a second look um, to possibly invest in. So, so the next one was Flux. I put that as a, a do not invest, um, at least at this point. Uh, basically, they're a peer-to-peer -peer plant data marketplace uh, built for growers, um, basically to deliver uh, results. Um, so their white paper was very, very high level. Um, there were really any details um, how they want to get, uh, you know, get to their approach. Um, they're going to leverage the Ethereum token, um, but they didn't really mention anything about their marketplace. Um, and I basically said, you know, until further details can be provided, um, you know, whether in their white paper or their website, I would not invest um, with them. And again, these are these reviews are probably three weeks old, maybe four weeks old. So, again, you know that they may have, uh, you know, added more information in the past three, four weeks. So, you know, just keep that in mind. And again, I'm not saying I'm a complete ICO expert. Um, by any means. Again, these are mainly just my opinions from, you know, my background in, in tech and, you know, business and that sort of thing. So again, but again, I don't know absolutely everything, right? I, just my kind of my own um, opinions and my own reviews. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, next one, New Cipher. So let's see, New Cipher was a key management system. So a decentralized key management system. So they were um, kind of going for you know the more of like the encryption um, uh, decentralized network they're going to leverage you know proxy uh, encryption that sort of thing um, i put these guys as a no uh, they're basically you know trying to leverage blockchain for encryption you know which you know a lot of guys you know a lot of icos a lot of startups are um, <clears throat> Um, what, I, what I basically said was, you know, their entire business model revolves around selling their technology to third parties such as hospitals and governments. And I said, you know, until the block, uh, blockchain is more mainstream and trusted, they're going to have a challenge, you know, to sell, you know, to, you know, to the governments and to these, you know, big uh, hospitals. Um, and obviously there's a lot of competition out there too with encryption that's already fully baked um, and not, not relying on, a, on the blockchain, which is very, very new. Um, and it's not really fully baked out there too. So until, you know, until the blockchain can be trusted more, um, and until it's, you know, that we know more about it, um, it's, uh, you know, they're going to have a hard time kind of, you know, selling their product, especially when they're competing with, you know, fully baked encryption services that's been out there for, you know, years, right? Um, this Definity, uh, these guys were a, um, let's see, I'm trying to remember what these were. So they were a public network of client computers. Um, oh, so they were doing the um, compute cloud. So where software can be installed and run with um, basically like a smart contract system um, hosted on the blockchain. So I put these guys as a no too. So they're basically trying to build this whole decentralized cloud computing. So there's... I can go either way on these guys because it's a good, there's a lot of talk about them, but what they're trying to do is it's it's really cool idea, but man, it's 
if they can pull it off, it's great, but I don't see them being able to pull it off anytime soon. But but again, again, this is just my opinion. So they're basically trying to build a decentralized cloud computing resource that runs on the uh, like a blockchain computer. So they're going up against you know um, AWS, Amazon Web Services, like cloud computing. Um, great idea. Uh, not quite sure if it's really practical. Again, this whole blockchain thing is very new. We don't know. Uh, you know, we, blockchain requires you know confirmations. To, there's latency issues. Um, you know, until the blockchain matures, until people can trust it more, until we know more about it, um, you know, they're going to have a hard time selling, um, you know, this model. So, but, but, the you know, this review is more based on the technology, but I think the company and the team behind it is pretty good. So, I mean, if you're going to invest just on, you know, the, the marketing and the company and the team, this may be a maybe invest. But on the actual what they're trying to do, I don't actually see that happening for a while, uh, probably a long while, three, five, maybe eight years. Um, so just just note that um, the next one is foam. FOAM, uh, but what these guys is a no. So these guys were a proof of location protocol, um, basically like radio beacons, almost similar to like a GPS uh, system that they're trying to build. So basically that's what they're going up against they're going up against like the you know global positioning service uh, system that you know google maps the open street maps the osm um you know use free peer-to-peer -peer service so they're basically trying to build like a network of data mapping um, but the problem is in order to do that they're going to require you know these radio transceivers um, in massive amount of these hardware devices, but the problem is they don't plan to build or even partner, at least at this point, to with anyone for these radio transceivers, right? Um, in order to you know broadcast their signals and, and you know map um, and build their network, you know, with with this blockchain. Um, so you know until they can partner with a device company. Um, or you know, start actually building their own radio transceivers. That I mean, I don't see their business model really, you know, going anywhere. So that's the reason why you know I put them as a do not invest um, at this point. But again, I mean, all these are great ideas, um, and I mean, this whole the whole blockchain is just absolutely taking off in the past year or two, and and all these ideas are just so sci-fi and futuristic and we would never even thought of even any of these just you know months you know in the past you know months ago just a year ago right um so not to say these are not good ideas and they all are it's just that we're just not there yet or they're you know these companies may not have the teams built yet or their ideas kind of not baked yet or it's not their white paper is just you know plain or it's just it, you know it reads like a marketing flyer um you know they don't have enough you know technical details in the in the in the uh white paper for me to you know fully believe that they know what they're doing um that sort of thing so that's the only reason um why I'm putting, you know, no for some of these. And that's kind of how I base my decisions on too. But I mean, it's kind of a tough call for some of these ICOs because, you know, you kind of have to decide. So do I invest on the basis of the business model of, okay, they have a great team and people, they have a good hype and they have a good marketing team and they're going to, you know, they're going to get a lot of hype behind them. So they're going to, you know, when they go, you know, when they launch their coins going to, their coins going to go up because people are going to invest, um, but but they, they may not actually even have a product, but they're going to get people to invest. So that's going to jack the coin price up. Or, you know, should we invest on the you know the basis of do they actually have a product, and will that coin actually you know stay at a a value level, right? Or, um, you know, that sort of thing. So there's um, I'm working on. Um, actually, I do have some solid rules of how to invest. I actually do have that in an, another video of kind of like what I look for in specific ICOs. So if you go back on some older videos, I have like some frameworks, um, some steps on, you know, what specific steps on how to look for or what to look for in these ICOs. Um, and again, you know, a lot comes down to what's going to keep that coin price solid and um, up after they hit an exchange. So when an IC goes live, you know, that coin, you know, gets listed on an ICO, on, a, on an exchange. And for you to make money, you know, as an investor, 
Um, that's basically, you know, you could sell your the coin that you receive from the ICO on the exchange. So, you know, but here's here's the kicker is, you know, what's going to keep that value of that coin up? So if it's literally just a marketing hype, that coin is going to get listed and it's going to get dumped. It's basically, you know, it, it's going to get listed in, you know, the same day it might just immediately get dumped. And you don't want that, right? I mean, you want an actual solid product where it'll get listed and maybe, you know, maybe go up a little bit and then it will slowly, you know, have a steady ramp up as the company and the products, you know, builds upon itself and then it, it um, you know, it evolves, you know, as time goes on. So there's a lot of things to consider. Um, but if you literally just want that, maybe just like a, uh, a quick, you know, as soon as it gets listed in the first week, you know, it, it doubles, triples in values and then you just dump it, you know, maybe you don't care about a product. Maybe that's all you care about is just a bunch of people invested in it and they don't even have anything and they did great on marketing and then you can just dump the coin. But, but again, I mean, that's super risky and you may not be able to sell it in time. And, you know, that's just not, that's just bad investing advice. So I would not recommend doing that. Um, the goal here is to actually look, you know, you know, all the fundamentals here, you know, look at the teams, look at the, the technology, look at the product, you know, look at what's going to keep the, the coin price up after it hit, hits the exchange. So it's, there's a lot of variables here. Um, next up is the Orchard Protocol. Um, so these guys were a uh, surveillance free layer on top of existing internet. Um, so basically they're trying to like bypass firewalls, access information, communicate freely. So these guys were trying to almost get past the, the firewall of China. So that was like their big strategy goal is to bypass what they call the Great Firewall, firewall of China. So if anyone is familiar with um, China and the Chinese government is they have the big firewall of the country of, you know, they restrict the internet access of the country, right? So what go, what goes in, what can, you know, come out, that sort of thing. And they're uh, trying to build almost like a VPN um, or a, a just-in-time VPN where it can almost bypass that firewall. But again, it's, you know, kind of, you know, essentially legal, right? Um, um, and even if it does work, it's, you know, it, it may get, you know, it, it probably just get shut down in, in a matter of time. But their whole thing is, you know, it'll, uh, it'll, it'll spin up, you know, just in time. It'll spin up when you need it and then spin down when, you know, when you're done. So they can't really shut it down. It's kind of undetectable, that sort of thing. So um, these guys, again, cool idea. Uh, it's not, I guess it's not just for breaking the firewall of China. It can be used for other things too, you know, other VPN, um, services, but you know, these guys don't even have a working product and I'm pretty sure they said, um, that they don't even know if it, it'll work. <laughs> it's basically just an idea at, at this point. So until they actually have, you know, somewhat of a, a working beta, um, you know, and, and testing it, um, I would not invest. Um, it's basically kind of just like a, uh, a, a pipe dream, you know, at this point. Um, moving on is this video coin. So I put the, uh, this is a yes. So, so video coin was, um, a video storage and distribution. So they want to position themselves as the go-to platform of distributed, uh, computing resources to handle, um, the, uh, video burden, you know, of, of today's internet. So data centers will be able to earn tokens by putting their stair, uh, spare capacity um, to work. Uh, so they're convinced, you know, video coin will revolutionize the video streaming industry. So it's a great idea um, because, you know, video streaming, you know, it's huge uh, resource hog, uh, sucks up bandwidth, sucks up, you know, computing resources, all that sort of thing. So um, great idea. They're backed by strong management. Um, they have a good technical team. Um, they're actually headed by the co-founder of both CNET and Salesforce, both great companies, uh, both, you know, solid tech companies. Well, CNET is more, you know, on the, the media reporting side, but Salesforce is a great uh, software tech company. Um, they're trying to solve, you know, a real issue today, um, which, you know, like a lot of these ICOs or, you know, just ideas or, um, you know, this is a, you know, a real solid issue that they're trying to solve. Um, and it's, you know, it's doable. 
um, at least uh, you know we think it is at this point. A majority of their underlying infrastructure for encoding um, and storage is already implemented, which can't be said for a lot of these ICOs. They're basically just ideas. So these guys already have things implemented, which is great. Um, they do have some competition uh, with this Theta token, um, but I think the Theta is a lot further behind and they're only focusing on streaming and delivery, unlike these guys where they're focusing on, you know, uh, a lot of other things besides, you know, the streaming and delivery. Um, their white paper is solid, um, but it's a little lacking in the technical implementation. Um, but I did, you know, I put them as a 9 out of 10 invest, so they were pretty solid. I mean, that's, uh, um, you know, one of the top, uh, you know, top ICOs I have on my list here is this video coin. Um, moving on is the Keep Network. So this was a privacy layer for Ethereum. So, uh, uh, basically like a private private data they want to uh, keep contracts basically off the blockchain I guess you know harness the full power of public blockchain um, enabling deep interactivity with private data so they're trying to address the gap in the core functionality of smart contracts with Ethereum um, great idea the team is a bit lacking uh, white paper is very short um, it's literally nothing but, you know, high level concepts, no actual implementation strategy. So until they actually get, you know, something more on paper, um, it's, you know, do not invest at this point. So it's just, you know, very lacking details. So finally, I want to uh, finish up um, with my list here and I'll have more, you know, in the, in the next couple of weeks too. This is just the, the list I had coming up until the past two weeks. Um, and I'm, I'm literally reviewing these almost every day. So I add more to the list um, literally every day now. Uh, Sweet Bridge, this is a huge, huge project. Um, they're, I don't even know where to start with this one, but basically they're developing like this uh, loan system through cryptocurrency um, and almost like a little ecosystem with these guys. I mean, it's, it's getting bigger and bigger. I mean, I'm hearing a lot more about it. Um, like I said here, my, my notes is it's a tricky one to review because they're trying to do so much. Um, they're trying to, you know, issue fiat lending, uh, a lending platform to two crypto. They're trying to issue two cryptocurrencies, two crypto coins. They're trying to tap into the global supply chains. Um, they have a very large and seasoned team, um, various, you know, backgrounds and industries, a large advisory board. Uh, I do think they need a little bit, you know, more economists um, on their team to fully map out what they're trying to do um, because, you know, they're trying to impact so much and trying to do so much. Um, there's a lot, a lot of talk um, of them, you know, in the forums and, you know, a lot of, you know, questions um, on, out of, you know, on the internet and, and whatnot. Um, they don't really have a roadmap, at least that I found when I, when I looked at this a couple of weeks ago. Um, I did see some notes where they had like this meetup in London that I guess it was pretty disappointing. Um, I guess no one in that meeting was able to explain you know, basic mechanics behind their asset leveraging platform. Um, you know, uh, and I, I guess they were very vague. So that kind of leads us to believe that they don't really have a clear strategy or at least the people in that meeting that were representing the company didn't know, um, you know, until they're until they're more clear, at least, um, you know, their mission's more clear and until they have a defined, more, more defined roadmap, I, you know, I, I just wouldn't invest um, at this point. So that's that's it for the ICO reviews. Um, I know we're um, pretty far in time, so I do want to get into Crypto Hopper. Actually, before I do that real quick, I put a post up on the Life Zoltar website. Um, so feel free to check it out. So I try to do a blog post maybe once a week now too. Um, and you can subscribe to it too if you go to just uh, lifezoltar.com, www.lifezoltar.com, um, and put in your email address down below and you get notified of the blog post updates here. Um, and I'm trying to do like these little write ups every week. And the one I did the past week is basically how to avoid cryptocurrency scams. So, you know, a lot of there's a lot of fake ICOs coming out. So I just, you know, wrote a little bit about that. You know, there's exchange frauds, there's, you know, these pyramid schemes out there, there's coin uh, mining scams, um, you know, just some things to be careful with. Because I know it's a lot of folks, you know, losing money and being scammed. So I just wrote up a little piece on that. And again, I, I took some of these um, talking points from various sources too. So not to say I wrote all this from scratch. Um, but again, I did, I did write some of it, um, from scratch, but I did take some, um, 
talking points from various sources too. Um, so I don't want to take, you know, 100% credit for all, uh, the full article there. Um, but feel free to check that out, lifesiltar.com. All right, so Crypto Hopper. So big news. So I switched to Kangaroo Package. So I was on the hair. I switched to Kangaroo. Um, obviously, you know, a lot more positions. I get, you know, pretty much all the coins now. I get a ton more signals now. Um, you know, I'm trading, you know, in two minute intervals now. Um, it's just, you know, it's faster, more positions. It's just, you know, it's just way better, right? So let me show you my trade history. Uh, here we go again. This thing loves to log out. Okay, so trade history, like I said, Bitrix, I switched from Poloniex to Bitrix. Um, and I switched from the hair package to the kangaroo package. And my signals are uh, just just two of them, the mining hamster signals and the crypto grow signals. And you'll notice they, they trigger a ton more signals on Bitrix. So I, the reason why, um, two reasons, actually maybe three reasons. So Poloniex, their wallets have been locked the past couple weeks. Um, and they, uh, they have a lot less signals on Crypto Hopper. And not only that, they're getting bought out um, by uh, one of the, uh, what is it, uh, Square or not Square, what was it, another company, but basically one of the banking companies, right, that's, that's backed by, uh, you know, one of the, one of the big uh, financial companies. So it's, you know, three reasons why I kind of wanted to get out of uh, Poloniex, get into Bitrix, and there's a lot more signals um, with it too, so. Uh, mining hamster signals, crypto grow, getting some crazy awesome trades, uh, getting like upwards, you know, 10, 15 trades a day. Um, good solid trades. I'll just kind of page down through these. Um, you know, good solid, what, 5% or there, seven, almost, you know, 7.6% trade there. Um, pretty, pretty good. Pretty good and a lot more signals than the uh, Poloniex too. So real quick, this video is getting super long. Um, quick settings. So like I said, Bitrix. Um, I'm on the Kangaroo package, so I can you know select all the coins. Now I just switched over, so I'm just doing the two signal groups. I, I'm not doing uh, TA strategies until I you know get the hang of this new uh, subscription package. Uh, percentage profit 1.5. High bid, low ask. I put these uh, zero because I don't want to try to, you know, try to get a lower bid and you know have the bot wait uh, to get a an order in. Um, stop loss percentage 0.5. Arm is at two. Hold assets is turned on. Um, sell is 30 minutes. Um, buy is at 15. And these are basically just up to you, depending on how much uh, money you have on the uh, exchange. So real quick update. Um, sorry for uh, going through this so fast. This video has got super long with the ICO reviews. But like I said, I literally just switched from uh, to the Kangaroo package and to Bitrix. So the next video, I'm going to go way into more details um, on Crypto Hopper um as I get used to my new subscription and get used to the new uh, Bitrix. And it's like I said, it's doing some pretty good trades um, and it's getting a ton, ton, ton more signals than the Poloniex was. So I'm pretty happy about that. So, all right, guys, um, sorry about the length of the video and, and about the short uh, review on Crypto Hopper. Promise to get in a way, way, way more details on Crypto Hopper in the next video. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.